What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Delta Force Season 5 is out. And in this quick video, I'll show you how to optimize for the best possible performance and, of course, the best looks possible. That being said, this video is not going to focus on Windows optimization. Instead, you'll find links to those down below. We're only going to focus on the in game options, config files, and things like that. So, without further ado, let's get straight into it. Before we even begin, if you're using an older graphics card, you may benefit from using DirectX 11 mode instead of DirectX 12. For most modern GPUs, well, while you may see a higher average FPS, FPS stuttering when it happens will be slightly more noticeable. Your low FPS will be even lower. So if you're rocking a much older graphics card or less powerful one, you can try right-clicking at Delta Force, heading to Properties, and on the General tab over here, adding hyphen DX11 as such to launch the game in DirectX 11 mode. But for most people, especially those with better newer GPUs, don't use this option at all. Then, still before we launch the actual game, let's go ahead and disable a few things that will help quite a bit. We'll forcibly disable ray tracing so we get much better performance. We'll disable mass acceleration, which should make your aiming much more consistent, though you can skip it if you're already used to it and happy with it. And finally, we're also going to completely disable TAA so the game looks a lot sharper and better, especially while you're looking around or in motion. In my previous videos, I've showed you how to do most of these steps, so you may already have some of these options set, but let's go ahead and do it anyways. To change these options, right-click Delta Force, hover over Manage, and choose Browse Local Files in Steam. The steps for the Delta Force launcher may be a little bit different. When you open the file location, you'll probably be in this folder here. Just head back, and we're in the same folder now. Open up the Game folder, followed by Delta Force, then Saved, followed by Config, Windows Client, and now we get all the game's configuration files here. We'll go ahead and open a few of these with just Notepad. So, to disable mouse acceleration, find and open the input.ini file. I just clicked one of the files, typed it in, and it jumped me straight to it. Opening this, we'll see a huge text file with tons of text. At the very top, right after Input Settings, add a new line here, and from the description below, copy and paste these two options. B, enable mass smoothing equals false, and B, view acceleration enabled equals false. Save the file and close it. Then, to forcibly disable ray tracing, look for the file called gameusersettings.ini, open this, and inside of here, you should see a ray tracing section with r.raytracing.enable in game equals false, and if you don't, you'll find this down below. Just make sure it's set to false, which means ray tracing is disabled. There's not really any visual difference. There is a pretty big performance cost though, and certain reflections and shadows, things like that, may look even weirder with ray tracing turned on, so we're getting a few benefits here. Save the file and close it once more. Now, to completely disable TAA, which will make the game look a lot sharper, especially in motion, look for the engine.ini file. Open this with Notepad once more, and now we're looking for a section called System Settings. So scroll down all the way until we see System Settings. If you don't see it, just add a few lines after all of these paths, bits of text, and add the next section down below. System Settings r.postprocessaa quality equals zero and r.tonemapper quality equals zero as well. Finally, if you wish to skip the intro when you're starting the actual game itself, you'll need to head back to the Delta Force folder. So if you closed it, right-click Delta Force, Manage, Browse Local Files, and then we'll head into the Game folder, followed by Delta Force, then Content, and Movies underscore HD. At the very bottom, you'll see V Logo HD, Logo 2, and Logo 2 Looping. All of these are the intro movies that you see when starting up the game. You'll need to skip these anyway to start loading the actual main menu, so if you want to skip it automatically, just delete these files or rename them. That being said, whenever you update the game or very Verify the integrity of game files, it should re-download these anyways. So I'll just rename these so they're skipped, and our game should start up instantly. With these config file changes, we should have already improved things quite a bit, but let's get into game and play with the in-game options. This time when launching it, you should see we go straight to the main menu, loading as such. So heading into either Warfare or Operations, the optimization should work similarly for both of these. Head into your settings in the top right, followed by Game, and here you'll see the first change of this season. The combat section has been split into two pieces, or at least this has happened since my last optimization video. Besides that, I haven't really seen any changes to most of the settings here, for the most part. Skipping through keyboard and mouse, these are my settings here, just what I'm comfortable with. 
nothing too crazy. Controller, if you use that. Screen, here I haven't changed anything to do with the minimap, but you can do so here if you wish. The only thing that's new, at least relatively recently, I think with season four, was the backpack auto closing features when being attacked or sprinting, which is used in the operations game mode. Personally, these are my settings, but you can adjust them as you see fit for a better in-game experience. Then at the very top, show performance parameters. I'd recommend turning this on if you'd like to see your FPS and stuff like that in game, but do keep in mind Steam has a brand new FPS overlay that's super in-depth that you might get way more information out of, as you can see up here. And if you'd like to learn about this, you'll find a link down below. The only thing that won't show you, of course, is ping, packet loss, and stuff like that, which this option should. Then on the graphics tab at the very top, here we can actually start getting some major performance. Starting off with the display section, it's the usual thing of making sure you have the correct monitor selected and playing most likely in full screen mode, unless you tab in and out a lot, in which case borderless windowed is just fine. Full screen should give you slightly better input latency and slightly better performance, so that's always preferred, but if you're a multitasker, borderless windowed is probably just fine. Resolution should absolutely match your display. If it's a 2K display, set it to 2K, 4K, 4K, etc. And refresh rate for your display should also match your display settings as well. If it's 60 hertz, 144, set that here. The next few options are your preference. In match, frame rate cap should be set to unlimited, unless you're playing handheld or portable where battery life is important, or of course you're streaming or recording and OBS or YouTube videos running in the background, things like that are lagging, in which case I'd recommend capping your FPS to slightly below what you're actually getting in game. That being said, if you want a much more fine tuned FPS capping technique, you can use something like MSI Afterburner and River Tuner to do so. For most people, Unlimited is the best here. Then the out of match frame rate cap, I usually leave at 60. This will affect your firing range and things like that when you're in the menu. And finally, the back end frame rate cap, you can skip over unless you're using VSync, which I definitely recommend having set to off for pretty much everyone unless you're getting screen tearing. This will greatly lower your input latency. Sharpness, 50% is fine. And NVIDIA Fast Sync, I haven't seen too much of a difference here. If you want to test it out and you have a qualifying NVIDIA card, well, you can do so here. Scrolling down, field of view does technically affect your performance, but of course, user preference is infinitely more important. Have this set to whatever you'd like to actually play with, as that's what's going to benefit you the most. Scope magnification is a bit of a weird one. While you're using a scope and you zoom in, you'll notice that the surrounding area around the scope zooms in as well. That's the default behavior with the set to off. If you set this on, the surrounding area won't zoom in with the scope, but you'll notice a huge performance drop. Have the set to off for better performance. Then flash eye protection mode should make flashbangs dark instead of light, so it's a pretty useful thing to have on. This is, of course, your preference. Then base graphics and advanced graphics are where we can get some major performance boosts from the game. Starting off at the very top graphics preset, have this set to whatever you think most closely matches your system. If you've got a super high-end system, set it to ultra and work your way down, or of course low and work your way up. Most of the settings here will be setting to low anyways, even on higher-end systems, so that's where I'll start here. It'll make things just a bit simpler. Anti-aliasing, I definitely recommend setting to off. This will be grayed out if you're using upscaling at all as you can see. And of course, we forcibly disabled TAA in the engine file, so this option should be stepped over anyway, just leave it as off. Then weapon motion blur, your preference. Now we actually get into the more granular details. Reflections should be set to low for the best performance. There's not really a difference here. Texture filtering, this improves how textures look when you're looking at them from an angle. If you have this set to low and you're looking at the ground, for example, in most areas, it's gonna look weirdly blurry. I'd recommend high here for the least visual image impact, things should look quite a bit better on most if not all systems with a very, very small FPS drop, if any. The game will look way better with this set to high versus low. Then ambient occlusion, this makes darker areas around objects darker, things like that. Off is the best here, as you can most easily see people hiding in corners and things like that. Here, it's a tactical advantage and of course an FPS one too. Then particles, having this set to low turns off a lot of smoke, fire effects and things like that around the game world. It can be less visually cluttered, which is great, especially if you're a competitive player. But of course, if you want it to be more immersive, high or ultra is a good option here. It has a minimal impact on performance, but of course it removes quite a bit of visual clutter. Then distortion, this has basically no difference visually, and of course performance wise, low is where I leave this, as you won't notice the difference there. Then scene details, I'd recommend setting this to either high or ultra, 
decals and things like that in the distance seem to swap out to lower quality versions when you move away slightly further away. So the game should look generally more consistent. There'll be less popping and things like that as you're moving around. Ultra is just a general all round good setting here without any performance cost. Then scene view distance. This obviously has to do with LEDs changing. So models becoming lower quality as they move further away or higher quality as you get closer. For the most part, leave this set too low for the best performance. But of course, if you're sniping and things like that and trees popping in and out of higher quality is annoying you, you can always raise this here, but it does substantially cost a lot more VRAM as you push this up, also FPS. Then scrolling down to advanced graphics, rendering scale always leave at 100%. If you can't modify it, that's because you've got super resolution set to something down here. We'll get there in a moment though. Depth of field, your preference. Personally, I leave this off. Global illumination quality, there's practically no difference here. Looks and performance, low is fine. Shade is low, gives you better performance. And cranking this up only really improves how trees sway in the wind, how water looks, and small things like that that you won't really notice or care about especially when it comes to the FPS impact. Textures has no impact on performance, especially if you have more than enough VRAM lying around. You can comfortably set this to Ultra or Ultimate on graphics cards with way more VRAM, and you'll notice that the entire world looks a lot better. FPS wise, there's no difference here. If you're running a really low end GPU, barely letting you play with this counter in the bottom right, basically maxed out, then having the set lower is probably a good idea. Then streaming, this is texture streaming. And again, there's very little difference here. You'll notice that as you push this option up, it uses quite a bit more fear. And the only thing it really adds or removes is small little pebbles, rocks and small details in the environment. For the most part, if you have a ton of extra VRAM lying around like I do on ultimate versus low, either have it set all the way up or all the way down here. There's almost no FPS cost and it adds just a small few details to the game, making it slightly more immersive. Then shadows, this has to do with player shadows and not world shadows. And for that reason, changing this doesn't result in too much of an FPS cost, if any at all. For the most part, low, medium or extreme and ultimate are very blurry and somewhere around the middle is more crisp and sharp. If you like sharper shadows, ultra or extreme is a good option here. Then shadow map, this is the world environment, trees and foliage, etc. Shadows, this is going to cost a huge amount of performance and of course low is the best option here. Then post-processing, this is only chromatic aberration. Having this set to low has it turned off and anything above this costs more VRAM and only really enables that one effect plus a few other really unnoticeable things. Low is the best option here. Volumetric fog, if you like how the environment gets slightly blurry with fog when you go indoors or into certain areas, have this set to anything but low. Low has it off completely, medium has it on, and the rest of these options cost quite a bit of performance with basically no visual difference. Consider low off and medium on. Personally, I have it off, so low is what I'm using here. Then finally, animation. There's basically no difference performance-wise and visuals-wise, so low is fine. There's no difference. Finally, super resolution, here's where you'll be getting a huge amount of performance. And as we forcibly disabled TAA, things are gonna look really pixelated and weird if you don't use any super resolution here. So for example, off, you can see there's tons of pixelation and weird things happening with his hair, with his hat, shadows and things like that. And this only gets worse in game. Have super resolution set to either AMD Fidelity FX2 or Nvidia DLSS. If you have an Nvidia GPU, Nvidia DLSS is usually the better option. Then super resolution quality, have it set all the way to the highest quality option. So in my case, quality, or if you're using FSR, you can select quality here too. And you'll notice that that weird shimmering effect has gone away completely. Things look really, really good. DLSS frame generation should add input latency, but of course it's only added on newer graphics cards. For the most part in FPSs, don't use this pretty much ever. And I'd recommend the same here. Have the set to off pretty much at all times. If you have qualifying AMD graphics cards or at least certain system configurations, you might see an AMD frame generation somewhere on this list, usually after NVIDIA Reflex. If you have that option, you can play around with it again. But again, I definitely recommend having it set to off as frame gen adds more frames, sure, but it also adds a ton of input latency. Finally, NVIDIA Reflex, low latency. You'll need to play around with this. Low latency should give you much better input latency, obviously, and having it set to enhanced should lower it even more. 
but you should only really use enhanced if you're using a much lower powered CPU and a higher powered GPU. So for me, low latency is fine. And with that, we've optimized pretty much everything here. Finally, on the audio tab, you'll notice that HRTF is a new-ish option added, I think, in season four with object-based binaural audio. For me, this one sounds just a little bit weird, but play around with these options to see which one suits you best. For me, binaural audio is fine. And with that, we've run through pretty much everything. So hopefully you found this video useful. And of course, you can now go ahead and enjoy the much better looking game with way better performance. That's that. Thank you all for watching. Mine has been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.